You know, going around this room, there's a lot of things people are very excited to see. Rob over here, oh, he's waiting for Moon Knight. He cannot wait for Moon Knight. I, surprisingly enough, I'm very excited for Obi-Wan. I'm not quite sure what it is you're really, what the next thing you're dying for here, Chris. Sonic I, and Bullet Train. I, well, Bullet Train, yeah. Well, if we're talking about the movie the theaters, yeah, Bullet Train looks so good. But TV there's somebody in this room. There is. That is really looking forward to Halo. And that's Ray. So last night, I so I made a call. I knew Ray wanted to see this really bad. So I made a call. And yesterday, we got sent the first two episodes of Halo. Mm -hmm. So we gathered around, sat oh. down to watch Halo. <laughs> and it started with Rob crushing disappointment. Oh, my God. But not because of the show. <laughs> because... They sent me they sent me a link to watch it on, right? But we wanted to watch it on the TV. So I tried to airplay it to the TV. Wouldn't work. So I plugged in an HDMI cable in a thing and it said, nope. And then I read something on it says, yep, this will not let you see it on anything other than the screen you got. So me, Anne, and Ray, we cuddled around on the couch with our two dogs and put the laptop on the coffee table and snugged in. To watch Halo. Were you the little spoon or the big spoon in this scenario? <laughs> no, hey, Ray, you pull the mic a little bit closer to you? Well, because we had only, like, how many plays to press play? Five okay. times. This, five. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, when, when you look at the screener, it says if you have five plays of this. I'm like, oh, that's reasonable. I guess you're going to watch five times. But you try to play it, and it wouldn't work <gasps> because of the uh, the error. No, yep. I'm like, all right. So I just got this error message, and you had to refresh the page. And when I refresh the page, you now have four plays left. We're like, crap. What inspector plug it gadget in, nonsense is this? Plug it into the TV. Refresh. Doesn't work. You and now have three plays left. I know. It was like and we're like, oh, what's happening? We got to like, watch Halo. It was like watching uh, John disarm a time, a time bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like we like, only got two left. What are we going to do? I'm like sweating. <laughs> like, oh, my God. But we finally got it working, just watching it on the laptop in, in front of our thing. All right, so we got two different perspectives here. Mm -hmm. We got the perspective of me, who I haven't played a Halo game since I played a little bit of the first Halo game. We've got Ray, who plays Halo, yeah. right? So let me, and you can tell we came from two different perspectives. And we're not going to give any spoilers away here. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I will let you tell tell you these are not the Disney Plus bullshit twenty seven minute episodes. Each one of these episodes was near an hour. Uh, so each of the first two episodes, the were I leave, the both of them were both over fifty minutes. So I'm like, sweet. So I knew I liked that right away. So we get into the first episode, does a lot of laying of the groundwork and stuff like that, right? And I gotta tell you, the first 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really liked, like, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it's, it's big action sequences happen. And like they did stuff. Cause remember the first, the first teaser for halo, they dropped. I was like, that looks a little cheap. Yeah. I don't look cheap no more. It does. No, this show does not look cheap. Whatever criticisms you may have of the show looking cheap is not one of them. Uh, they, they put a lot of money into the visual effects on this and good action choreography and things like that. So there's that. Then we start to get a sense of the overall world and what's going on in this world. We get a little bit of the conflict. There's this thing called the Covenant, but it's still kind of a big mystery to everybody and all this kind of stuff. Then there's a little bit of national treasure in there. Where there's a, <laughs> I know that sounds Rob, weird. Rob is so confused. They steal uh, but the Declaration of Independence. There, well, well there, there's, there's a MacGuffin. There's a okay. significant MacGuffin that gets introduced in and all this kind of stuff. And then we get into episode two and it gets a little bit more into laying background and laying story and more narrative and all that kind of stuff. I will tell you this. There is the big question a lot of people had going in is, will Master Chief take off his helmet? Yeah, he does. And it's awful lot. But for me who's not a hardcore player of the games, I didn't care. I actually appreciated that the helmet came off. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I haven't played this game in a long time, but unless you can tell me, and maybe you can, if I were to ask you, if somebody were saying to me, you know, Master Chief can't take his helmet off, and I ask why, if the only answer is because he doesn't in the game, that's not a good enough reason. Right. If there's a reason in the game that he cannot or does not take his helmet off, like, for instance, in Mandalorian, there's a reason he doesn't take his helmet off. It is part of the code. This is the way. We never take our helmets off. That's important. And I, I simply don't know if in Halo 
mythology, there's a reason the Spartans can't take their helmets off. But if there's not, and the only reason you got is, well, they don't do it in the game. That's not a good enough reason. This isn't the game. This is screen. And for me, as a non-Halo player, I was perfectly good with him taking the helmet off and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you got some background. I'll say this. Here's my overall impressions. And again, we're going to make sure we don't give anything away here. Um, I enjoyed it. I like this show. Was, am I like clawing at the chalkboard, dying to see the next episode like I was after like WandaVision and stuff like that? No, it's not like going to be my top five favorite things I see on TV this year. But for getting off to a start, I I actually think this show's off to a pretty good start. Uh, I enjoyed what I saw. Again, the stuff that they're laying the foundation of, maybe a lot of game players. Like, I know Ray pointed at the TV a lot going, Easter egg, Easter egg, Easter egg. And I'm like, I have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about, but okay. But but it worked for me. Again, I'm not going to say it's fantastic, it's great. I know there's been some mixed reviews online, but hey, as a novice to this, I got to say, I'm down for watching episode three. So uh, yeah. there's that. Now, Ray... You were dying. To, I mean, yesterday was game day for you. Uh, yeah. Game day. And you know this game way better than than I ever will. What was your impressions of First it? First of all, I think Rob would actually like the show. Just because it's very, there's there's a lot of, um, like I was saying to John, a, a part of it reminds me of like when I was watching or saw a couple of episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Like there's, it's ve- just yeah. a couple There's of a episodes? lot of dialogue. Uh, I, I, and that's not a bad thing. Um <laughs> uh hardcore halo fans oh man i can't wait to see their reaction to this because a lot of it is different like um just a lot of it's different a lot of things are changed in in this from the game but i i actually thought it was okay everything they did the one disappointing thing i had was the music halo is known for like the music and the you know the themes and stuff Right. I didn't. I didn't really notice any of the music. Like even the ones they played, it was f- forgettable. I guess to me, which was kind of a disappointment. But the sound effects were great during that ac- action sequence. John was talking about like the booms and everything. You felt them even on a little, on the little. The impact of things was great. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna take time to get used to this Master Chief. But I'm, I'm on board. Now you were mentioning one of the things you were mentioning was that this is different. That this is like, or somebody like me wouldn't know that watching it. But what would you say without giving spoilers away? Were some maybe the, like some key differences to you just generally? I I just say one thing: he's more human. That's it. Right. He's more human, and you have to accept that. If you don't accept that, then you're not gonna like it. That's 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 basically all I'll say. All right. Um, well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something that I really loved. And again, I don't know how close or far away this is from the game stuff. The way they introduced the Covenant in this, and we get to see a little bit into the Covenant hierarchy, that whole part I found fascinating. Like, I'm like, that's good. I'm really excited to find out more about that culture uh, and everything. And again, the the CGI Mm -hmm. on the alien creatures was for television, top shelf for television. It was absolutely top shelf. So, yeah, I know I've seen a bunch of mixed reviews going around online, and that's fine. But for me, I kind of liked it. And Ray, I know you said you you were on board. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see the next episode. Okay, there's if any everybody when you get a chance to watch episode two, there's a character in there who I thought stole that whole episode, and uh, I think you'll know you'll know who I'm talking about when you get there. Is it the one with the blonde hair? (laughs) Yeah. The one with the blonde hair. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That, that, that's the only thing that made that episode. Like I, I would have, uh, yeah, I would have just said, yeah, but yeah, that made the episode and, um, I can't wait to see what's next. Cause that cliffhanger was pretty good. Yeah. The cliffhanger was good. I I've got to ask you, I mean, Halo is obviously known for its, its romance and character development and great pathos between the characters, you know, the, the really how it gets into the nitty gritty of the human experience. Now, knowing that he's being facetious, ladies and gentlemen. knowing that, uh, does the character development, the way that a TV show has to develop characters, does it work in the context of if you're a Halo fan? That's I'm not sure it worked for me. I don't know. I can't speak because I even with the Master Chief figures on my desk, I consider myself very casual. There's people that read the books and get all into that, just like as with any other thing, Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. 
I I'm dying to hear what a hardcore fan would think of the show. Right. Because it's it's not going to be what you expect. It's not what you uh, they would probably be, probably expect. But I think it's encouraging. I mean, uh, if you liked it and you're a, even if you're a casual fan, but if you're you've been really excited for this. Yeah. So it's nice to know you didn't come away crushingly disappointed. No, no. I'm watching the next episode for sure. Well, yeah, that's, that's good. I, think I that, have to watch. The that's next an episode. endorsement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, I'm excited because I, you know, John, is it good science fiction? So far. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the best, again, to me, the most intriguing part is the MacGuffin and the and the Covenant culture. That's the part that's really getting me interested. But that's good. That's yeah. that, that's music to my ears. It can still go either way. Like, the show right. can still go either right. way, but right now I'm kind of on board. It, it, it did its job. If, if a show can uh, make you want to watch the next one, then it did its job, yeah. I think. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think? Have you guys been excited for Halo? Maybe you're a hardcore Halo player. Maybe you're not at all. Maybe you think the show looks good. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've heard a lot of the stuff that some people online are saying about it. Whatever you guys are thinking right now, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Peloton. Now listen, in the never-ending quest to try to stay in shape, one of the keys is to vary up your workout and your exercises to make sure you avoid losing your motivation and keep from getting burnt out from doing the same thing over and over again. Peloton has you covered. I know for me, one of the keys was getting my Peloton tread and using the Peloton app to get my varied workouts in. And Peloton just keeps pushing you forward with new classes, new music, new ways to keep your workouts fun and motivating. One of the newer offerings that has me personally really excited is their boxing classes. Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest discipline, and you don't even have to have any gloves. Discover a fast, furious, and fun workout with Peloton instructors in your corner. Even if you've never boxed before, these classes will have you working up a sweat while working on the fundamentals of form, footwork, and fun combos that will keep you on your toes. Peloton has a workout for every day and every kind of schedule. So guys, right now, visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com.